Okay, and this is a quick splice back in because running the uh, simulation managed to uh, slow down the uh, the auto audio recording enough to get it out of sync with the rest of the video. So um, the simulation just took a few moments to run, and as you can see, um, for each of the different stages, you can see the original random data source, uh, the first up converted stage after the channel filter, uh, then a couple stages of up conversion here. You can see it gets a little bit narrow, and then a final mix out to place the carrier uh, at the correct frequency. So if we go back and look at the design, what you can really see is that this design um, is doing a couple things, but the first stage here is just a simple uh, single rate filter doing the channel function. In this case, we just specify the 11.424 rate. Uh, it could be 11.2. Uh, for number of channels, specify the coefficients is just a MATLAB expression. In this case, um, we've wrapped them in a uh, fixed point type. Uh, there are 18 bits with a binary point at the 17th bit. The base address. Um, and then finally the filter structure. And so in this case we're using all the taps, but it could be a half band or an nth band. Um, and then this just cascades on. One of the cool things that I do want to point out is that if you do go take a look at the help here, uh, there's context sensitive help for all of the IP and even the top level design. So as we pull this up, what you're actually going to see is the help, the uh, resources and information about how the design folded and how it channelized the design in order to achieve the results we were looking for. So in this case, you can see that the core rate was selected at uh, 182 megahertz. Uh, the actual input rate was 11.2, and then information on the channel count, uh, data on the port map, the red, the uh, memory map and then the number of resources. So in this case 14 multipliers and 640 LUTs. If you go back up to the top there's also some more detailed information. Um, so it tells you the folding that was achieved, uh, the utilization of each multiplier, uh, the latency of the design, and then some stuff here which is kind of interesting which is the number of physical input and output buses. So if you can imagine a very simple type of design where the input rate is relatively low to the uh, output rate, you're only going to need one bus. But there's some rate as you continue to interpolate, which eventually you're going to need to bust out into multiple vectors. And this is something that Advanced DSP Builder handles very well, and I'll show you later um, how that works. So coming out of the single rate filter, we're still at 11.2. Uh, we run through a scalar. Uh, this is relatively self-explanatory, but again, it has uh, some nice context-sensitive help. Uh, we go in through a fur, which is where the first place that we do our interpolation. So in this case, we're just doing an interpolation of two, and we're telling the tool to use half-band filters to knock out every other uh, coefficient. Uh, run through another scale. Run through an interpolator uh, by a factor of four. Uh, then it'll appear on this output. And here's a good example of where you can see this little, it's going to be hard to see, but if I zoom in here really close, you can uh, see this two. And this two basically refers to the number of buses that's needed. So what's essentially happened is, is by this point, we've gone from 22, from 11.2 to 22.4 to 88 times four channels. So there's no way that you could do that on one bus. So it's basically breaking them out and vectorizing it for you. So in this case, you can see we're just using the existing uh, MATLAB facility for vectorization. And then we're just going to break out the I and Q pairs and run it into a complex mixer that's multiplying it against an NCO value that, which is a numerically controlled oscillator for a particular frequency. So again, you can see there's some information here about what's being generated, the number of resources, uh, latency information. Uh, on the control plane, you can specify the output rate, uh, the size of the output, the accumulator precision, and the individual frequencies. And then there's some information in terms of the uh, SF, the Spurious Free Dynamic Range, and all that kind of stuff. And then you go out to a final scale, and that's your digital up converter. Um, as you can imagine, it's very easy to change the number of channels on the fly. If I were to change the number of channels and propagate it all the way through and it needed to be twice as wide, you would just see this bus get a little bit fatter, but each tool, each IP block down the chain would know how to interpret and uh, manage that change. So if we just take a look at a couple things on the simulation side, you can see the random data coming in. Uh, getting manipulated by the first single rate for filter, providing the channelization function, and then a couple interpolators. Uh, and you can see that indeed the uh, interpolators are kicking in and increasing the sample rate. 
Um, if we go back up to the top, one of the things worth pointing out is the top level help uh, that is generated by the tool. So in this case, you can see all of that, that help that's generated for these top level XML files. So all of the memory maps for all the IP blocks, for all the primitive blocks that your design includes, all the way down and including um, individual resource estimates for the different sections that you have. So for the individual scalars and how many multipliers, how many memory bits. So you really get a good deal of this uh, before the design even runs. And uh, if we go back and looked at the design that we saw, um, we, the resources that were pulled up was approximately 3,500 registers and uh, 80, 18 by 18 DSP blocks. And we had no problem hitting the 182 megahertz rate. So one of the key things here is that if you wanted to go and move this to a Cyclone device and run the same thing, you literally could get uh, the Cyclone type performance without having to, and I've uh, managed to kick this off uh, inadvertently. So let me uh, be sure to kill this before I uh, messed up, mess up my um, uh, audio once again. Um, so I could come into here and specify a Cyclone 3 device if I wanted a lower power configuration and uh, Advanced DSP Builder would repipeline the design, pro adding more pipelining changes so that I could fit it in a lower cost family. Uh, so design exploration is, is key here for this device. Um, alternatively, we've got some really great stuff on the FFT side as, as well. So you might be asking yourself, well, why would I need a FFT uh, when I've got a mega core out there, we've already got plenty of ways to do it. Well, essentially, there's a lot of need for custom FFTs. Uh, you may be doing an application where you need to be able to process faster than one sample uh, per second. So if you're doing a radar application and you want really fast, wide FFTs, uh, perhaps you're doing an FFT that's very long and you want to have a lot of additional uh, 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 precision. So there's a lot of things here that comes into play, and uh, if you look at what we've done is we've provided a lot of low-level blocks, and then this is in the case of Stratix 3. But this is a simple 4,000-point uh, FFT using a Radix 2-squared architecture. And there's a lot of good literature out on the web on this architecture. It's, it is the most optimal. It kind of has the benefits of both Radix 2 and Radix 4 um, in terms of the minimal number of adders and multipliers for each configuration. And if you were to go look at one of the first papers published on that, what you'd see is that this architecture pretty much is like exactly what you'd see in the data sheet. So taking out, or, or in the paper, taking out all the, pi type, the pipelining and all those individual structures really simplifies the design. So in this case, you see some simple controls that are tapped off uh, the main enable to basically fire each of these blocks. And you've got a, a simple uh, decision in terms of feeding the data back around or propagating it through um, to the next stage of the system. So a simple uh, decimation in frequency. Uh, nothing very complex here, but it really shows how some low-level blocks, you can really cascade and build up some, some nifty IP blocks. And then any of these designs, as we stated before, once you're in this environment, you don't have to worry about your implementation. So you can make a decision after the fact, how fast do I want to run? Uh, how much uh, pipelining do I need that's handled by the tool? What device do I want to target? How many channels? All that stuff can be parameterized and just changed at the very end. So again, just wanted to provide that com quick uh, background. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact your Altera rep.